Right, good morning, welcome to this week's video. Good start to the day, typically the trains are on strike, so I've had to get a lift down here today. I did plan to bike from Beckles to Halesworth. So here we are, we're in Halesworth, we're just gonna bike down the road, meet up with Simon, and we're spending the day bike rafting. Flyford's that way. Fantastic. Fifteen minutes, I reckon. Superb. What do they say about cows laying down? Well, they're tired. They're tired. <laughs> Right, so here we are. So this is where we're gonna actually get onto the river bank here. So this is the River Blythe here, and this footpath runs all the way to the A12. I did do a little recce earlier on in the year, and I did find a place that we could possibly get in. So it don't look too bad. No. So the only issue we've got is this, there's a fence that runs along the river there. Yeah. It does, it is broken a bit further up by that second set of trees. Just and around the sweep Just there. around that sweep. Yeah. Um, and that's where I saw that we probably could get in, but that was March, so there's a lot of foliage and whatnot growing up around there. There's another bridge further around where the, you see where the old workhouse is on yes, the distance on, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just on the um, there is a bridge that is down, but apparently it is passable. Okay. So uh, we'll just have to play it by ear, really, and uh, see? Yeah. see how we get in, really. Yeah. So that's the put-in I was thinking. Perfect. I think we can just about get down there. One or two soggy feet, I think. That's all right. I think probably the best plan is, is if we set up the rafts on the top here. Carry them down. Get the, have you put your bike on your raft? Only dry. Only dry, right, yeah. okay. Yeah. Then. Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing. I'll just have a look, just make sure there's no downed barbed wire because there should be a fence yeah. along here, but we'll just double check. Here, can't you? And it's um, up there, so it's obviously down somewhere, isn't it? Right then, time to get all of this off the bike. I'm going to take you through the whole setup later on once we get onto the beach. I'll describe all of the gear that I'm using when I'm bike rafting and how I tie things on and where we put things and stuff like that. But uh, I think it's quite important that we get set up and uh, start making our way. So we don't want to get stuck on the mud flats when we're in Blythburgh. No, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> it does not sound good at all, does it? Stuck on the mud flats. <laughs> I think it was me cheating last time, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I get my own back.
that was a bit of a farce actually with all of the cow muck and everything that I managed to collect on the bike and everything but we're all done so I'm paddling the alpaca caribou Simon's in exactly the same raft but more stealth like in a green one there That's a <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you can see it does take a bit of time to get them all set up and everything um, and then getting into the water with them as well you just have to be a little bit more sort of careful uh, pushing pushing them about and everything obviously because you've got the whole weight of your bike and all of your gear and everything inside of them but uh, we're all done we're all ready so we're just gonna get them in the water and start making our way downstream down towards Blythe Estuary and then we'll see how we get on once we get down there unfortunately I don't know where the river starts and where the river bank ends I'm just going to temper this first, I think. And that's as close as I'm going to get. actually <laughs> this reminds me of, oh that stinks as well reminds me of the last time me and Simon were at pack rafting on the way to me in the summer there we go now we plan to have lunch in South Wales today and you can just imagine the state of us coming in covered in duckweed walking into a restaurant in South Wales. It's just the one swan actually. All right, so that's one bridge and I believe the next one has collapsed. Right, we're coming up to the collapsed bridge that I spotted. But I think we just might be able to squeeze underneath. So we're just coming up to Blytheborough. Blytheborough has a huge church, the Holy Trinity Church, which is massive for the size of Blytheborough, which is just a tiny little village. But years and years ago, this was quite a prolific uh, trading post here. It did have its own customs house, which obviously isn't used anymore. Uh, big old boats would come up the river here for trading. And the other story about Blytheborough is the Black Shuck. Black Shuck is a hellhound, which is uh, sort of a, a fable around these parts. Bungie is especially known. For the black shuck but uh, on the front door of the church there there's a big black um, big black stripe down there which is uh, supposedly from the black shuck trying to uh, claw its way into the church to get the villagers but uh, you believe what you want to believe about that so we're now coming into a more tidal area here it's really really opening up we're just about to come under the a12 and go onto the flats in Blytheborough so this whole area around here that we're paddling now before 1953 this was all filled with the river Blythe running through the middle of it 
And then what happened in 1953 in January, there was a massive, massive tidal surge which flooded the whole of the East Coast. And uh, the River Blythe burst its banks. And uh, you can just see random bits around here of what was the old river bank. And uh, the whole area is flooded. Uh, there are still channel markers around here that you have to follow to follow the course of the river because if not you're going to get, especially with the tide go running out as it is now, you're going to get stuck uh, on the mud flats. So we're just going to follow the channel markers and the sides of the river and uh, make our way up to Southwell. This is absolutely beautiful out here. I can't believe I've never paddled this before. It's absolutely stunning. You've got that beautiful tree line just over there. You've got the flats just behind us and the bird life here is absolutely amazing. Everything from lapwings, oyster catchers, teal, shell ducks, egrets, a few other bits and bobs that I'm not too sure what they are. But this is nice. Just got a little bit of wind which is sort of side on at the moment, so paddling across the channel and letting the tide and the wind just taking us through. But yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. Really, really, really chuffed that we came to do this today. Just using the paddle as a rudder and just letting the tide and the wind take me down. The bird life is amazing here. Right, so that's it, all packed up. Just a few more bits just to put away. Uh, so we're packed up on the Warbleswick side of the river here, um, just because there was an empty jetty here that we could easily get up. And then we're just gonna uh, bike across the footbridge there, and then we'll end up into Safewell, just along the harbour, just behind Simon over there, and uh, go for some lunch. So I've got a little treat for Simon for lunch. Uh, hopefully he likes seafood, so uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> looking, starving yeah, too. <laughs> absolutely hang, absolutely starving. So yeah, looking forward to that. So just got a couple more bits to do and we'll be on our way.
Right, lunch dock today. So we're at Soul Bay Fish Company on the harbour in Southwold. April this year, this <laughs> completely burnt down. Completely burnt down, but they've managed to get it up and running again for the summer season. This is one of the best places to come if you want some seafood. So I've got to treat Simon for lunch now. I have a mixed platter for two, and if you can throw a couple of oysters on there as well, please. So that comes to 40 pounds. There we go. Cheers, me old boy. Chin chin. All right, so for starters, we've got a portion of chips each. And we're just waiting for that buzzer to ring to bring out Neptune's finest for us. <laughs> well, I hope you're hungry anyway. <laughs> Where to start, eh? Hey? Well, it's been a cracking day. Really enjoyed it so far. And it ain't over yet. So, I've got to fill our bellies full of this stuff. Get back on the bikes, head through Southwold. Probably have an ice cream on the way through, what do you reckon? I think so. We can't go to Southwold without not having an ice cream, There's can we? certain things you have to have. <laughs> Seafood, add them, and ice cream. And then we're going to head up the coast uh, north. Uh, the plan is to head up to Eastern Bavance um, and Cat Will was going to spend the night up there. But first, I'm going to get through all of this lovely stuff. Right, well that's me, pleasantly full. Absolutely stuffed to be perfectly honest. I didn't need chips for a starter on that. So we're just biking up into Southwold now and uh, we'll make our way along the prom. Uh, up here where it says no entry. Right, well this is the dodgy bit now. I'm gonna negotiate the seawall and the rocks. Well, it weren't too difficult getting onto the beach at all. Uh, it'd be a nightmare if it was high tide, but the tide's just turned, so it wasn't too bad at all. So, nice easy bike along the beach. And that sea is like as flat as a witch's tip. So I'm gonna go for a swim. But I forgot my budgie smugglers, so I might have to blur a few bits out. We are at Eastern Broad now. So, you can just see over yonder that's all fenced off out there. It's because there's a lot of shingle nesting birds that are nesting behind the shingle there. And there's a load of whitefowl on the water there. But this is where I was thinking we could spend the night, somewhere along here, because we've got access to some fresh water. Um, tide is on its way down and it hasn't made it up this far by the looks of things. So I think we should be safe.
go. The spot. Right, so here we are. This is camp for tonight, just up against the cliff. We've got the wind just coming over the top there, so we're sheltered from the wind here. The sea's not as rough as what I thought it was going to be, so I'm probably going to have a little dip in a second just to cool off. But yeah, absolutely fantastic day. Really enjoyed that paddle and that bike along the beach has been absolutely gorgeous. Um, I just checked out the broad just behind us there. I was expecting that fresh water to be drinkable, but it's a bit brackish, uh, so we can't drink that, unfortunately. But we've got enough for the rest of the night, which is the main thing. Right, well I think that is most of the walkers and dog walkers all disappeared off the beach. We're on our own. I don't need to frighten anyone. Time for a dip. My old sciatica is playing me up, so I need a bit of cold water therapy. Oh, that's better. Good old North Sea. Are we ready? Let's go. Just going to get the tent all set up but i think what we'll do is i'll take you through today's setup for bike rafting right so starting on the front of the bike here i've got my tent which is my one tigress backwards bungalow that you've probably seen me use in a few videos recently as well and then underneath i've got my alpaca caribou stored underneath now talking about the pack raft the alpaca caribou is one of the only two specific pack rafts that have been designed for to carry a bike the other one is the GP Cargo. So as far as I'm aware, there's no other pack rafts that are specifically designed to carry a bike on the front. A lot of people say that you can stick a bike on most pack rafts, but these pack rafts, especially the Caribou, have a really upturned bow, so they're specifically designed to carry a lot of weight on the bow. So these are all stored on the front of the bike using one of these Alp Kit um, frame mounts here that carries basically the tent and the, the, uh, the pack raft underneath as well. And then on the frame of the bike, I've got my two water bottles, so that can carry a litre there. And then this one's about 750, I think, this camel back. But that actually has a live straw built into it as well, so I can filter water if I want to as well. And a good thing about using the camel back with the live straw as well is this is a squeezy bottle, so I can actually filter water straight back into my Nalgene as well. And then on the rear of my bike, I've got my seat pack here, and that basically has got me my summer sleeping bag and a spare set of clothes inside of it and uh, my sleeping pad as well. And then in my bag, so this is the Alt Kit Ledge. This is a 30 litre bag. So I use this pretty much for all of my day, day pack rafting activities. So inside of this for today, I've literally got my waterproofs, my food, a few bits of clothing inside of there, a towel, uh, my first aid kit. On the side, you can see I've got my paddles on the side. And then I've got a few bits of ancillary, bits of equipment for pack rafting and for camping as well. So we've got version two of the paddle pole for the backwards bungalow after the old finger bob situation in Scotland a couple of months ago. So I found an old piece of a carbon fishing pole that will literally slot onto the top for one section. And then the other section is another piece of carbon fishing pole, but this probably needs a bit of work doing to it, but that will just slot in and tighten up to give us our pole. And hopefully, no more slashed fingers. Right, so that's camp all set up for this evening. So I've set up my backwards bungalow, basically facing into what little wind we've got there. So it's actually coming through the vent at the bottom there. So I'm not gonna condensate up. To be honest, I don't even think I'm gonna uh, close the tent up tonight, but I can guarantee you if I do that, it's gonna come <laughs> and rain later on. Simon's got his uh, Terranova laser that he's set up just down there. Et voila. 
And that is camp all done, really. So we've just got to think about some food. I don't know whether I actually want any, to be perfectly honest, because I'm still stuffed from that. But I'll tell you what it is, it is rum o'clock. It definitely is rum o'clock. So we've got a nice Martinique rum to have a bash on tonight. <laughs> Sounds good. I could go rum. <laughs> By the sea, it seems right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh -huh. Alright, just gonna have one of these quick little real on the go energy drinks or a bit of sugar. Right, I think I've all forced myself to have something to eat. I have got a real termat meal today, as always. This one's Lapskals, which is a very typical northern Norwegian dish of beef and potato. It's very popular in the, the Sami population up the top there. But yeah, 557 kilocals in that tiny, tiny little meal there. So to get some water on the boil, we shall get this one uh, rehydrated and probably have a coffee with a bit of rum as well. for a splash of rum oh, in your fire coffee. away. And that is that coffee cracking, I can smell it. It is. <laughs> I'm gonna have some, but without the coffee. <laughs> right, so that's me eight minutes all done. Time for some lap scouse. With a sandy fork. I'll struggle to eat the whole thing though. Right, have a try of this one then. So this is a Martinique rum. Is this that super expensive one you were saying about? This is the super expensive one. What if I don't like it? You have to drink it. It's quite fiery. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers anyway, it's been a cracking day. Well, it has, fantastic day. <laughs> Got some revs to it, hasn't it? Oh. <laughs> it's not as uh, calm and collective like the Kraken, is it? Right, that's the rum all done. I think it's time to hit the hay now. I'm absolutely shattered after today. I've really enjoyed it. You know, the whole thing about bike rafting, the adventure with it, you know, pedals to paddles, it's just been absolutely brilliant. And I've said it before loads and loads of times that pack rafting really does open the doors to adventure. And, and it really does. And you can see from what we've done today, we've combined the whole thing of bikes and paddles and then come up into Safewalt and had an absolutely fantastic lunch down there of all that seafood at the Sol Bay uh, Fish Company there. So it's been great. And then that absolutely beautiful bike ride across the beach. It's, uh, it's been great. It's been a really, really good day to remember. And in uh, really good company as well. It's been brilliant. I really, really enjoyed it. So time for me to get into my old uh, backwards bungalow and uh, shut the door, get some sleep, listen into that sea, and uh, we shall catch you in the morning. Right, shall see you in the morning.
where did we sleep last night then? Mm. Very well. Morning. What an absolute beautiful night that was. Nice to fall asleep listening to the sea. It was dry and the sun's now coming up over the clouds there and a beautiful, beautiful morning. What a cracking place to be. Not going to bother eating this morning. I'm still stuffed from yesterday. I've got one of these real termite breakfast meals but that can stay in the bag for another day that can I'll have a bacon sarnie when I get further up the beach later on right time to get out the old uh, cook set and uh, get a coffee on the go Right, so all packed up and ready to go. I'm literally got about a 40 minute bike ride along the beach there. Simon's breaking left up Smuggler's Lane to get the train home, but this has been an absolute fantastic trip and what a great campsite to have. bigger tires. I'm absolutely blowing out of my backside and I just stopped and look who I found down here. That's Sally the seal. Isn't she beautiful? Right well I've decided to follow Simon up Smuggler's Lane instead of trying to walk along this with this bike. It is so soft in places and I can fully see why big fat tyres help in this sort of thing. So we'll go up Smuggler's Lane and then I think we'll follow through down to, uh, down to Benica and then get down to the Sluice Gate and then uh, over the River 100 and into Keseland.
Right, so we just come out onto the main road in Cove Hive. I say main road, it's not really a main road because it's a tiny, tiny little village and most of it's in the sea now. And uh, this is where we split. So Simon's going left and I'm going right. So thank you very much for joining us. It's nice to have a bike rafting partner. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. How, how's it been? It's been fantastic. Loved every second of it. That, yeah. that paddle through the estuary yesterday, the ride on the beach, a great camp last night. Nice rum, yeah. good company, <laughs> brilliant, what more could you ask for? No, it's been absolutely brilliant, so thanks very much for watching, um, I hope you enjoyed yourselves, so I'll stick a link to Simon's video in the, the description below there, and uh, thanks very much, and we'll hopefully see you next time on the next one. Oh, I know.